limiting and excess calculations. Oh, I think that's a sandwich factory, and that's a robot factory. Oh, and I, I think I saw Dr. Atkinson there as well. Sometimes when you do a chemical reaction, one of the reactants, or the reagents that you're using, will run out before the others. And that's called the limiting reagent, or the limiting reactant. So, for example, if I have three vans here, each of them needs some wheels, and I have a stack of wheels to fix them with. Ten wheels. But what's going to run out first, the wheels or the vans? Well, actually, the wheels are going to run out first. So the wheels are kind of limiting here, and I have excess vans, if you will. Let's snip off to the sandwich factory. Oh, there's the instructions. Two slices of bread, a slice of sausage, and an egg to make my sandwich. Let me attempt to create this masterpiece. Put the bread over there. Lovely. Bit of sausage on the bread. Missed. Bit of sausage on the bread. Missed. I have sensed this is going to be quite tedious. I think I might have to super speed this. Alrighty. Oh, five second rule. I wonder what the five second rule at triple the speed is. Hmm. Anyway, so. You'll notice that once I've made my sandwiches, I have a piece of egg left over on the table. So I have excess egg. That was what I had too much of, excess egg. All right. So let me mosey on over to the robot factory. Oh, it's heavy with a sandwich. Uh, Dr. Atkinson, you know Dr. Atkinson's real. The real Dr. Atkinson actually makes a cameo in one of these hundreds of videos. So there are my killer robots. Uh, I have the Asimov chip there. So I'm going to put the Asimov chip into the robots. So they are now Asimov compliant. Which means they won't kill people. Lovely. Now I'll put the danger chip in. Mm-hmm. You may have noticed that the Asimov chip, the green ones, seem to be limiting. I didn't have enough of them. I have enough batteries though. Power that one up. This one. Oh, so I have excess of these other two ingredients, the battery and the, the red danger chip. Oh, I just realized where Dr. Atkinson is, bad stuff must follow. Oh, he's going to be friendly. He's just holding his hand. That's lovely. Uh-oh. He's shaking his head. This does not look good. Could be worse. Could be ultraviolet instead of red. Oh, Dr. Atkinson seems to survive. Uh-oh. I hope he doesn't set off the uh, self-explosion device. And predictably, Dr. Atkinson dies his 50-second death. Enough of this silliness, let's try a simple one. So 14 grams of each reactant. Now I like to draw out the grid and have moles, mass, and molar mass. Don't forget to include the units in case you forget them later. So 14 grams of each reactant and the molar mass from the periodic table. Don't forget, ignore the big numbers on the bottom line. Ignore the big numbers. Put the equation there in case uh, there's a point for that in the mark scheme. Moles is mass over molar mass. And you can see, possibly just by inspection, that there's way too much hydrogen. Half of nitrogen, seven of hydrogen. But what if the numbers are evil? How can I be sure? Well, this is my way. Put a box. Divide the moles by the coefficient. Divide the moles by the coefficient. And the lowest is the limiting. Lowest is limiting. So what's the lowest of those two boxes there? It's the nitrogen. So that is the limiting reagent, which means the other one must be an excess. So I like to draw excess, excess, to, rem to remind myself, it's too much, excess is too much, it's wrong, it's wrong. But you know, the last one, that's still right, you didn't change the periodic table. Now the top line is the ratio line, so 1 is to 0.5, as 3 is to 1.5, as 2 is to 1, follows the ratios. And so how many moles of product? I made one mole of product. This is a medium one. 
Now, not always do we mention limiting and excess. Sometimes you just have to realize that, possibly as you're going through the, uh, the question. But I've used the word limiting here so that you know, an excess. Moles mass and molar mass, don't forget the units in case you forget them later. Moles is mass over molar mass, in case the examiner feels that's important. All right, put the numbers in from the question. Now I need to, the moles of butane, then I can make a comparison. So I'm going to do moles is mass over molar mass. The IB likes you to use all the decimal places from their periodic table. Uh, I'm not going to do that in these videos since there's not enough space. I'm not that keen. And in the box, put the moles divided by the coefficient. The moles divided by the coefficient. There's an echo in here. So what's the lowest? The lowest is oxygen. Lowest is oxygen. So that is the limiting. The lowest is the limiting. Butane's excess, so I put a big cross. X, X. It's wrong. Cross, cross. So how much of my excess reagent, how much excess butane remains? I'll just make these smaller. Well, I put in 19.3, and I know that's too much. 19.3 grams. So 6.5 is to two, we're doing the ratio thing at the top line again, as one is to I don't know. Well, just cross multiply. One is to I don't know as 6.5 is to two. And that comes out at 0 0.308. All right, so now I know how many moles of butane I've got. You've got to use the limiting to help you work these things out. The excess, it's wrong, it's too much. Moles times molar mass is mass. So I put in 19.3 grams, but I only use 17.9 grams, leaving me 1.4 grams excess. That's how much excess I have in there. And what's the mass of carbon dioxide? Well, using the ratio, top line again, one is to 0 0.308 as four is to, just work it out, eh? Quadrupling, 0 0.308 gives you 1.23. The molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44. Probably should remember that. That's from the periodic table. Multiply those two numbers together and it gives you 54.1 grams. So the mass of carbon dioxide is 54.1 grams. And finally, a nasty one. Looks quite short, can't be that bad. Mm-hmm. All right, let's draw out the boxes. Moles mass, molar mass. Units, the equation, and let's put the numbers in. 150 grams of calcium carbonate. You should know the molar mass of calcium carbonate is 100. Oh, that looks problematic. I've got a volume and a concentration, but there seems to be no boxes. Well, there's no room to draw anymore. So let's just use the equation concentrations moles over volume. And that gives me the moles of hydrogen fluoride, which confusingly is also 1.5. Mm -hmm. That's to try and trick you that there's no excess and limiting, there's no problem. Oh, but there is a problem. One and a half over one, one and a half over two, that's the lowest, that's the limiting. So calcium carbonate, it's wrong, it's excess, X it out, X, X. Last one's okay. So 2 is to 1.5, as 1 is to 0.75. That's the ratio line, the top line. Oh, so what volume of carbon dioxide is produced at STP? Well, maybe you know by now that one mole of any gas at STP is 22.4 litres. And I've got 0.75 moles, which gives me 16.8 litres. And we are done.